Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Just before we get stuck into this video, have you gone along and watched our giveaway extravaganza video? If the answer is no, then you definitely need to go and check it out. So once you finish watching our top three road running shoes for 2021, click the link in the description because it's the biggest giveaway we've ever done and there's nearly a thousand pounds of running goodies up for grabs. So now that's out of the way, it's that time of year and we like to take a look back at all the great running shoes that we've run in and pick out the ones that have impressed us the most. We thought we'd do it a little bit different this year, so we're gonna be making three videos, top three road shoes that we're doing now, top three trail shoes, but we're also gonna be producing a running gear of the year video. I've gotta be honest, it was quite tricky to pick out just three pairs and there was a lot of shoes that almost made it onto the list, but let's dive in and let's start with number three first. And I think this might be a little bit controversial because it is a very versatile running shoe with a really loyal following and it is Sockenier's Endorphin Speed 2. The Endorphin went for a very subtle update last year, just with a slight change to the upper construction but I was really glad when I found out that it still ran very similar to that original version. I was a big fan of the original Endorphin Speed, like most of the running community, and it made our gear of the year list last year. So what is it that I like so much about this shoe? Well, first up, I'm a big fan of this Power Run PB midsole. Great compound, really, really comfortable underfoot, but it also feels like it's giving you so much back when it comes to rebound and propulsion. Having that quite aggressive rocket motion or speed roll technology, as Sockany call it, uh, the shoe feels super efficient over distance, but it also runs really lively when you up the tempo, say in a speed or interval session. Weighing in at 244 grams, it's still a pretty light shoe, but this shoe comes with some substance to it as well. So good level of support around that heel cup, nice levels of padding in that gusseted tongue in the upper, so not super stripped back like it is in some speedy shoes. So still nice and comfortable across the top of your foot. So I think Sockany have got the balance just right in the speed too when it comes to comfort and performance, but the standout feature personally for me is the fact that they've used a TPU plate in that midsole and not a carbon fiber plate. By having that TPU plate, it makes the midsole a lot more flexible uh, when you compare it to say its carbon plated brother, the Endorphin Pro. So that makes this running shoe a lot more versatile and the Endorphin Speed 2 will pretty much do it all. An awesome shoe for those sort of tempo speed and interval sessions, but it also doubles up as a very comfortable speedy race day shoe for when you're doing those sort of quick 5Ks or when you're pushing the pace a bit longer over distance, say for a road marathon. The only reason it's in number three spot is because I do find it quite hard to run slower in this shoe, which I know for a shoe that's built for speed is not a bad thing, but if you wanted one pair of running shoes to do all your sessions throughout the weekend, I have found it quite hard to do recovery runs in the Endorphin Speed 2, and I have tried, but before I knew it, I'd up the tempo, up the pace, and that recovery run had gone out the window. Still a fantastic running shoe, and it had to make my top three road running shoes of 2021. It was very, very close between second and third spot, but I personally feel the shoe that took second place was just a little bit more versatile. Moving on to number two on our list, and it is the super lightweight, neutral daily trainer from New Balance, the Fuel Cell Rebel V2. Now, I was a little bit late to the Rebel V2 party, but thanks to our wonderful audience telling me to get a pair of these great shoes to test and to try out, I finally got some and boy am I glad I did. I am a massive fan of this running shoe because every time I pick it up off the shoe rack and put it on my foot to take it for a run, I get this huge smile on my face because it just feels so right in every way and that has to be a good thing when it comes to our running shoes. The weight of the shoe is crazy light for a daily trainer, weighing in at only 221 
21 grams in a men's UK 10. And it has to be one of the best fitting and most comfortable uppers I've ever put on my foot. And it really does feel like I haven't got a running shoe on. Really good hold around the midfoot, even though that tongue isn't gusseted in the upper. Nice lockdown in the heel, and it just feels so light and airy when I'm out there putting in the miles. Moving down to the midsole, and it's a very similar story there. And the fuel cell compound used in the Rebel V2 is crazy light again. So it makes this running shoe feel super well balanced, but still very comfortable underfoot on those sort of longer weekly runs. But then when you pick up the tempo on those quicker sessions, even though there's no TPU plate or carbon plate in that midsole, the shoe really does spring to life. And it reminded me and feels very similar of those more expensive super shoes. I found it very comfortable on those longer, slower efforts, and then really responsive and very quick on those speedier sessions. I think for its price point of 120 pounds, it is such a great value, versatile daily trainer. And because this was an older colorway, I actually picked this up for only 95 pounds. And I challenge you to find a better, more versatile running shoe for that price point. I think if I had to pick one running shoe to do all of my road running in for the rest of my life, so recovery runs, speed sessions, intervals, and race day, I think I'd be pretty happy in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V2. The one thing I will mention is, if you are quite dominant on a heel strike in your running gait, or you tend to run in shoes that have quite a lot of midfoot substance and structure, then maybe the Fuel Cell Rebel V2 isn't the shoe for you. Uh, you really do have to be quite neutral, and I'd say run off a sort of midfoot, forefoot strike Right, because if you don't, it really can run unstable because it's very flexible, there's not a lot of structure, and this fuel cell compound, like I said, is super, super soft. Luckily for me, I'm pretty neutral and I run off a midfoot, forefoot strike, so I'm happy to say the fuel cell Rebel V2 has taken our second spot. So there you have it, number two and number three on our list, and when you think about it, they're actually very similar shoes, so both pretty lightweight, super responsive, and very versatile but the shoe to take our number one spot is very different to that because it is built for one thing and one thing only and that is out and out speed and performance over distance so it is the very impressive Nike Vaporfly Next% 2. So where do I start with this? Well the first thing I've got to say is for years and years and years I stayed away from all that hype surrounding Nike's Next% technology because I thought it was exactly that just hype but eventually I did get weak and I succumbed to the alpha flies and I handed over my hard-earned 259 pounds or something like that and I was really disappointed I really didn't get on with that shoe at all it just felt way too extreme for me it didn't feel like I was running in a running shoe it felt like I had two kind of little trampolines strapped to my feet and as far as stability goes well let's just say running tight corners at speed could get very interesting. Because of my bad experience in the Alpha Flies, I really wasn't sure whether I wanted to test out the new and updated Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, but I'd heard so many good things about them. I shook my piggy bank out, I jumped on the Nike app, and I let out a little tear as I handed over my 207 pounds for this pair of shoes. But boy, am I glad I did because the first time I laced up these bad boys and took them out for a run, it was a bit of a revelation. Firstly, let's talk about upper construction and fit. And this new updated upper on the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 feels really nice wrapped around my foot. Super breathable. In fact, so breathable that you can feel that wind and air rushing through the upper as you're running along in the shoe. The tongue isn't gusseted that I was pretty surprised about and it is very thin in design but Nike have just put a little bit of padding at the top of that tongue where the laces pull tight so it's actually pretty comfortable across the top of your foot. Obviously this is a pretty stripped back upper because Nike want to keep that weight down to a bare minimum but I think they've got that balance just about right because this shoe has been designed for running efficiency and running economy over distance you know for running fast half marathons and marathons so you still want a bit of comfort when it comes to the upper. I love those 
those little zonal pods of padding around the heel cup, offering you just enough comfort, but making sure you're nice and locked into the back end of the shoe. And we can't talk about the upper construction without mentioning these clever laces. These laces are brilliant because they've got lots of little notches all the way down them. So you get that really nice lockdown specific hold around your midfoot, but then those laces don't work loose while you're running. Now you can have the most super high tech upper, but if that midsole isn't up to scratch, then it's pretty much pointless. And that's definitely not the case when it comes to the Zoom X compound used by Nike. Again, offering that brilliant balance between comfort but out and out performance. So super comfy and plush underfoot, but it also feels like it's returning bags of energy when you up the pace. Obviously, there is a full length carbon plate worked into that midsole for extra propulsion, and it is a match made in heaven when you pair up that high performance Zoom X foam and Nike's carbon plate technology. But one of the things I've liked the most, especially when you compare it to my not so good experience in the Alpha Flies, is the Vaporfly still feels like a running shoe, just a very, very quick running shoe. So I didn't feel like I had to learn how to run again. I wasn't taking a crazy wide angle around every bend just to be on the safe side. So I think it's just a little bit more normal and it definitely feels a lot more stable underfoot. Now, if you've followed the channel for some time, you'll know that I've been quite harsh on Nike trail running shoes in the past and that terrible trail running gilet that they made. Uh, really disappointed with some of their trail running products, but credit where credit's due and the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2 is an incredible race day shoe and has to be one of, if not the most exciting running shoe that I've ever put on my feet. So great job, Nike. What I will say is looking at the profile of that midsole, this is a crazy narrow shoe at the midfoot and in the heel, and there's not a great deal of width in the forefoot either. Nike actually said they've added a bit of volume to this shoe, so I dread to think how narrow that original version was. So if you've got quite a bit of width to your foot, definitely at the midfoot, then maybe this isn't the best shoe for you. But there's nothing better than grabbing a shoe out of the box for the first time, putting it on your feet, and just knowing that it's gonna be really special. It fits like a glove. All you wanna do is get out the door and start running down the road in it. And all three of these shoes have given me that feeling. And just looking at them, and they're quite nicely color matched as well, aren't they? I must have a blue thing going on with my running shoes, but yeah. All three of them shoes have given me that feeling. So that is my top three road running shoes for 2021. And I'm super excited to see what the brands bring to us next year. Road running shoes that came really close to making the top three was ASIC's Noosa Tri 13. Really enjoyed running in that shoe. Again, such a great value, versatile road shoe. It was just pipped at the post by the Endorphin Speed. And also ASIC's Meta Speed Sky, another carbon plated racer. To be honest, I hadn't done a great deal of mileage in that shoe because whenever I needed a carbon plated racer, I would pick up the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, but them shoes very, very close to making the top three. Now, if you're new to the channel, then welcome. It's great to have you along, but you might not be aware that every Christmas at Run For Adventure, we tend to organize a giveaway extravaganza. We work closely with some great running brands and gather together a big bundle of prizes. And it's a great opportunity for us to sort of give back to our viewers and our audience and just to show our appreciation for all the support that you give the channel. This year's is our biggest giveaway ever and we've got together about a thousand pounds worth of running goodies. So I've left all the details of how to enter in the description below guys. So go along, get entered, get in the mix because you don't want to miss out on this one. And then we'll be drawing out the three lucky winners at random in our Christmas Eve special. Also, don't forget to get involved. It'd be great to hear back from you guys on what are your top three road running shoes of the year. You know, the shoes that have excited you when it comes to your training and racing. So let us know in the comments below. Up next on the channel is going to be our top three trail running shoes of 2021. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. It's always appreciated. We will see you back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Three spot is because I find it quite hard to run slower in this shoe. Now, I know it's built for speed, so that's not a bad thing. But if you wanted... If you wanted...